when you realize that a lot of the ways that the world tries to control women, to contain women, to divide women, to take advantage of women, to oppress women, it rests on us hating each other and therefore ourselves. When you realize this, you break free of this containment. Like you learn to love yourself and move in your own best interests, which is usually also in the best interests of other women. And one would say that this is also a class awakening, a class reckoning, if you will. We, the masses, the lower classes are the consumers. With whatever contempt, disgust, the upper classes have towards us, it stems from fear and resentment. They need us and they know it and they resent it. Hey bestie, welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group podcast where we talk about how to get that bag while also securing your own bag. I'm your host Elle and let's get into it. On today's episode, I have a confession to make. I am basic. I literally have never had a unique idea in my life. My perception of fashion and style and food and thought has all been influenced by the people around me, by other women. There is no version of my existence that would have been untouched by human influence. But somehow, one of the biggest crimes that a woman can commit when being perceived by others is the crime of being basic. As if being similar to other women is a disease. As if it is a sin to be like other girls. Like, let's talk about it. On today's episode, we are talking about how our fear of being basic is rooted in our own internalized misogyny and our class anxiety. But before we get into it, I need you to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you never miss a spoiled girly episode. With that being said, let's get into it. One of the weirdest comments I got when I first started creating content was that I was basic. Like, oh, she's so basic. Like, she's just like any other content creator, like so basic. And I guess it's meant to be an insult. And I tried, I tried to beat the basic allegations, okay? I tried to be unique, but I couldn't. Like, I'm not unique. I'm just like every other girl. My fashion sense, the way I dress, the way I talk is just like any other girl who lives where I live, who consumes the media I consume. Like, I am painfully basic and painfully aware that I am basic. But at the same time, why are we made to feel like basic is a bad word? Why is it meant to be an insult? The moment I stepped out of my pick me era, I no longer felt like it was a crime to be like other women, right? Isn't that suspicious? That the moment we start loving other women, like that label, basic, no longer stings. Why do we have to be unique? Why do we have to distance ourselves from other girls, from other women? When things that are basic are essentially a crowdsourced opinion on what is good, what is useful, what is recommendation worthy. In our information saturated world where we can get information right at our fingertips, we have a question and it'll get answered in like two seconds. Like there's so much information out there, there's so many options for XYZ categories and the girls, the girlies are so good at taking all that information, distilling it, condensing it, and interpreting it for the other girlies. So that is our gift, like being able to synthesize all of that information and create useful compilations for other women. Like what? We are so good at that. That's why like the girlies are dominating influencing because we are so good at that. And not all of us have the time, energy, and resources to try all of these options. So it is so helpful to have other people kind of synthesize the options for us. That is a service, okay? So, so that's why I also love being a woman. Like we really did that, okay? And as you know, I love pondering. I'm rebranding overthinking into pondering because is it really overthinking? No, it's pondering, okay? We're rebranding it. One of the things I'm pondering about is our fear of being basic and the internalized misogyny factor of it. Like, let's talk about it. Why is being like other women such a bad thing? Why do we ask, is it too basic? Whenever we put on an outfit and we know that the outfit eats, okay? But we ask our girlfriends like, is it too basic? Okay, whenever we wear something that other women also like wearing, whenever we wear something that everyone else is also wearing, like why do we always feel like we have to distance ourselves from other women? Like why can't we celebrate our similarities, revel in our alikeness? Okay, you know why? Because we have been conditioned to divide ourselves, distance ourselves from each other. 
we have been conditioned to not trust each other, to not copy each other, to not celebrate each other, and actually to gossip only when it's against each other. But gossip, for the sole purpose of discrete information sharing, for our own protection, oh, that's bad. Okay, you know why? Because we have been conditioned to divide ourselves. But would it be so bad if we celebrated each other's desires, each other's choices, each other's recommendations, if we trusted each other? Like, would it be so bad? Like, if we were proud to be reminded that we are similar to other women to remind other women of themselves that we see each other in each other. Why? Why is that a bad thing? We are conditioned to not want to be basic, to not be like other girls, dislike other girls, hate other girls, so that we will learn to hate ourselves. Okay? And I think that's such a sinister thing that women have been conditioned to believe and subsequently do. And it took me such a long time to realize why I was filled with so much self-loathing at a certain point in time in my life. And that certain point in time in my life was in my pick-me era, okay? When I was so stuck on being I'm not like other girls. Pick me, choose me, love me, patriarchy, male validation, success in capitalism. It is no wonder that I was also filled with so much self-loathing, self-hatred, low self-esteem. At a moment in time when I was also hating other women. Ooh. So that kind of gives me chills, like having that realization. I was really out here, like doing all these feel good, self love mantras and Instagram quotes and mirror affirmations. Like, you know, that Glossier mirror affirmation that everyone's so obsessed with? None of them worked, okay? Because I haven't worked through one of the biggest blocks that I had in loving myself. So if you're struggling with developing your perception of your own self worth, Try being okay with being basic. Try being okay with being like other girls. Try shutting down people who say, I hate it when women, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know what? I don't hate it when women do that. I wish they would do it more, okay? I wish they would think that way more, dress that way more, speak that way more. Speak, period. They want us to hate each other so we will hate ourselves, okay? And the moment we stop hating each other, we also stop hating ourselves. You are woman. You are womanhood. And that's why when you start loving other women, you start loving yourself, okay? And here's the thing. One thing that I really appreciate about us women, and sometimes it's like a double-edged sword and it can be used against us, is we are so good at giving grace to other women more than we give grace to ourselves. This is why I think it is actually much easier for a lot of the girlies who have low self-esteem, who have just all this self-hatred going on, just try loving other women. That might be easier for you to do. And over time, you will realize that that love for other women will grow into love for yourself, okay? Just try. And let's get into the class implications of being basic as well. When I realized that the term basic is low key a way for people to make average income, average socioeconomic level people more inferior, like it's a low key shade. Okay, it's a low-key shade to people who are not rich, okay? This concept is exemplified in that one Emily in Paris episode where Pierre Cadeau, he called her bag charm, Ringard, aka basic. Like he was so horrified by it because Emily was basic and so he didn't want to work with her marketing firm because... Why would I work with a marketing firm who employs basic women? And now this is where it gets good because Emily... Honestly, the reason why Emily ground a lot of people's gears is because she didn't know how to take the word no for an answer, okay? Honestly... When you really look back at it, the reason why people are so turned off by her is number one, she wasn't aware that she should be keeping herself small. She wasn't aware that she should be fitting in. It really reminds me of Bella in Poor Things where she was just wholly unaware that she should be acting like a woman in a sense that she should be keeping herself small and unseen and unheard and only be seen and heard for the purposes of the men around her. Like, uh-uh, she was out there for her own good. And that kind of reminds me of Emily too and Emily in Paris. And that's why people kind of perceived her as like clueless. But to be honest, she just doesn't have a fear of being seen. I mean, let's talk about it. Like women who don't have that fear of being seen, it really grinds a lot of 
people's gears, especially other women who do have that fear of being seen. And I get it. I've been on both sides of the spectrum where I was a hater. I was a Pignesha, okay? I was like, all these women being seen, like, who do they think they are? And now I'm on the other side and I'm like, ah, I totally get them. But anyway, that was a segue. I think that's why a lot of people don't really resonate with Emily in Paris because she she wasn't behaving like a woman. You know, she could be dressing hyper feminine, but she wasn't conforming. People weren't about it. So after Pierre called Emily basically basic, she was not going to let it go. She confronts him. Like I'm telling you, she was not taking the social cues. Okay, she confronts him. She tells him. I am a basic B with a bad charm. In fact, do you want to know why I got that bad charm? Because my friends and I were obsessed with Gossip Girl. We all wanted to be Serena Vander Woodson in her gorgeous, crazy, expensive couture. But the only thing we could afford from any of those designers was a clip-on charm from an outlet mall in Winnetka. So yeah, I guess that made us pretty ringard. You think ringards don't respect designers? We worship designers so much that we spend all we've saved on a dumb accessory just to feel like we're somehow on your runway. You may mock us, but the truth is, you need us. Without basic Bs like me, you wouldn't be fashionable. She cleared, okay? Ate, left no crumbs, devoured. That's what Emily did. And this is how it comes across to me whenever people call me basic, whenever people call other women basic. It's giving class contempt. They hate that the girlies are wearing their class, being proud of their class, representing their class, okay? Their average, very middling class. Because that's what basic is. It is what the average woman says, has, buys, wears, likes, loves, recommends appreciates and aspires to. And I know that this class aspiration vibe has been a function of fashion since forever. The upper middle class who aspire to be upper class adopt upper class fashion. And then the middle middle class who aspire to be upper middle class adopt upper middle class fashion and so on and so on. And I like to call this the top down trickle down mechanism of consumption. So when a specific trend in a specific category has finally trickled down to the bottom and is now quote unquote fully saturated, the people on top now want to differentiate themselves from the lower classes and so on and so on. It is a cycle. Okay. For example, with the rise of lab grown diamonds, why do you think celebrities stopped wearing them on the red carpet? Okay, why all of a sudden colored stones like rubies and emeralds are making a comeback. Why farmers market halls and elite college degrees and homesteading replace designer bags and luxury cars. Because the upper classes will always want to differentiate themselves from the ones below them. Okay, they will always want to differentiate themselves from the people that they influence to be similar to them. It is this top-down, trickle-down mechanism that actually fuels the wealth of those on top. Did I just say the quiet part out loud? So yeah, that's why I feel a certain way whenever people say that women are basic. When people call me basic as an insult, like, okay, like, why are you hating me for existing in whatever social class I occupy? And that's the thing with lower class adoption of the things that the higher classes influence the lower classes to adopt is that it makes status easier to achieve and purchase because of scale. So how does lower class adoption make certain things more accessible due to scale? Well, it's because there's more people buying stuff and in the world of manufacturing, when you make a lot more of stuff, it drives the cost per item down. So when you make a thousand pieces of one thing, it's actually less expensive to make one thing in that batch versus if you only make a hundred pieces of one thing. And another way that scale drives the cost down and makes things more accessible is the fact that people also crave dupes of things. So manufacturers can make dupes and that also costs less. So once again, it drives costs down and it makes it more accessible. And the same thing with college degrees, especially in the United States. College has now been more accessible due to student loans and accessible is not the same as affordable. Okay, no nuance Nelly. We're not talking about that topic right now. It is a whole topic in and of itself. That's not the topic today, okay? Back to the topic. College has become so much more accessible nowadays due to student loans being handed out like candy to unsuspecting 18 year olds who didn't know that they were signing up for sometimes, a lot of the times, a lifetime of debt, okay? And that's why a simple college degree from the state school is no longer enough, okay? It is now the elite college degrees that matter more, they're more desirable, and thus communicate higher status. And on top of that, not using the degree for its intended purpose, it's as if the act of wasting the degree in itself is a status signal. And let's talk about it. Nowadays, a simple college degree is not enough 
to communicate higher status, you now have to go to graduate school as well. And once again, this is a function of the top-down trickle-down mechanism of consumerism. Okay, like, do you get it now? Overall, the increased accessibility of things that were largely exclusive to the higher classes has now become more affordable and accessible to the lower classes. And one would say that that would be a good thing, all right? Like a more educated society, that's a good thing. A society that can afford transportation, which is freedom. You know, that also happened with cars. Before, cars were only reserved for the wealthy. You have to have a driver, it has to be super expensive. But because of scale, now everyone and their mother has a car. Although a lot of people would argue whether that's a good thing or not. But I'm just saying, okay? The top-down, trickle-down mechanism of consumption, it resulted in everybody having what the higher classes used to monopolize within themselves, now we can access that. But, you know, it's a cycle, it's a cycle. And honestly, whether you agree if that's a good thing or not, it doesn't matter because it will keep going, whether you like it or not, okay? So uh, I just want you to be aware of that machinery that is driving our consumption habits and not be caught up in it and instead profit from it or at the very least, not get disadvantaged by it. And in a more optimistic view of this top-down, trickle-down mechanism of consumption, let's look to this scene from Dracula on Netflix. So Dracula is this medieval character, right? And he, for some reason, he ends up in the bottom of the ocean and he wakes up in the modern times. And he goes into a regular middle-class home in the UK and he was telling the woman that she's clearly very wealthy because she had a fridge, a TV, and a car and her house was a treasure trove. And the lady was like, what? My house is a dump. And Dracula was basically like literally astounded because he couldn't believe that the average person, a literal peasant in the modern time lived so much better than a medieval king. Like not just a king, okay, kings and queens. He said, I knew the future would bring wonders. I didn't know it would make them ordinary. And he ate with that, okay? It highlights how luxuries of the past have become normal today due to the accessibility of said luxuries via the top-down, trickle-down mechanism of consumption. That's how much we have improved our quality of life and we take it for granted sometimes, okay? Like modern plumbing, electricity, centralized air and heating. These are now accessible luxuries that we can afford because of the top-down machinery that I just talked about, okay? Long story short, I am not at all jaded on this whole machinery thing because it is what it is, okay? It is how the world has been and always will be as long as we humans function in a society. This is what we humans do and we cannot stop it. And you know what I always say, don't get mad, get paid. So this is how to get paid. Be okay with being basic. I am exactly like other girls. Like when people say, oh, you hate it when women do this and that. No, I love it when women do this and that. Like I wish they would do this and that more. Okay, whenever people try to pit you against other women, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she's perfectly fine. I wish she would do that more. When you realize that a lot of the ways that the world tries to control women, to contain women, to divide women, to take advantage of women, to oppress women, it rests on us hating each other and therefore ourselves. When you realize this, you break free of this containment. Like you learn to love yourself and move in your own best interests, which is usually also in the best interests of other women, okay? We already talked about individuation here. It is not collectivism, it is not individualism, it is individuation, okay? And one would say that this is also a class awakening, a class reckoning, if you will. We, the masses, the lower classes, are the consumers. With whatever contempt, disgust, the upper classes have towards us, it stems from fear and resentment. They need us and they know it and they resent it. So bestie, I really need you to wake up, okay? Bestie, wake up. <laughs>